Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. Now I've made it clear many times over the years of making videos for Harry Potter folklore that Remus Lupin is one of, if not my all time favourite character from the Harry Potter series and that's down to a number of reasons. From what he represents as a person, what his lycanthropy represents and his overall humbleness that spills over into what is only low self esteem and low worth. His character's journey is really warming and he even meets the woman of his dreams, falls in love, gets married and has a child. It's no secret that the woman we're talking about is Nymphadora Tonks, who despises her first name but that's okay, I'm sure many people don't like their own first name. But anyway let's continue. The two overcome quite a lot to achieve the life that they were building but it was tragically cut short when not one but both of them were killed during the Battle of Hogwarts. Tonks was killed by her very own aunt Bellatrix the Strange, while Remus was killed by Antony and Dolohov. Now I found it very surprising that despite Tonks being an Auror, and despite Remus being a defence against the Dark Arts teacher, meaning they were both skilled, that they were both killed in 1v1 duels. However, it is made known that both Lupin and Tonks had spent so much time raising their son that they became quite rusty with a wand and were not as sharp as they normally would be. Weirdly, I find that reason satisfying as it does justify why they could have been defeated in the manner that they were. Something on the other hand that is frustrating that does really bug me is the manner in which so many other characters have been killed, like Fred Weasley for example, an extremely important character in terms of importance to his family, he's a twin to George, son to Molly and Arthur, brother to Ron, Ginny, Percy, Charlie and Bill, and does he go down fighting like a hero? No, he gets killed in an explosion. I won't get into that though and we'll get back on topic. So Remus and Tonks are killed, but if certain situations had changed then things would have ended up differently. Remus was torn between the fact that he was now a father, which seen his responsibilities towards his son become a prime factor, and the fact he wanted to fight in order to have a world for his son to be actually able to grow up in. So it's protect his son or protect the world his son will grow up in. It's not exactly easy, nobody wants their child to grow up in a dark twisted environment. For some time, for months actually, Remus had devoted his energy to protective charms and enchantments and concealments, which as I mentioned previously weaned his duelling skills. The call of Neville Longbottom was something he did not plan on answering originally out of concern for baby Teddy. However, this was not in his character and it was only a matter of time before his morals got the better of him. I feel as if Remus was really torn between two beneficial situations but chose to go to Hogwarts due to the fact that children were dying. These Hogwarts students were still children at the end of the day and Remus knew he could lend his experience and skill. He wanted to be a father that little Teddy could be proud of. Tonks on the other hand did stay behind at the insistence of Remus and her mother Andromeda. To her credit she did stay, putting the safety of her son before everything else. She still had a duty as a mother to be there for Teddy, but like her husband, she was a very skillful and powerful duelist. Don't forget, Tonks was an Auror. Her skills could have been badly needed in the fight against more experienced Death Eaters. She couldn't just sit there knowing there was people dying while she could help. Despite her mother's protests and insistence that she remain behind and being well aware of her husband's dismay, Tonks ultimately chose to join the fight knowing she may well not come back. Unfortunately for both Lupin and Tonks, they didn't come back and young Teddy was left without his parents just as Harry was. It was something that really ate Harry up, that two people he cared greatly about who also had a newborn child lost their lives in a fight that was basically about him. The initial plan for Remus and Tonks was not to join the fight, to stay and provide for Teddy. Had they done so then they'd both still be alive. However it was the beauty of both characters, the strength of their morals that would not allow them to sit out the fight. As I said earlier they had a decision, they could stay with their son and care for him which was completely admirable and respectable or they could go and fight in order to help protect the current world they live in and prevent the darkness that Lord Voldemort was trying to spread. They both chose the latter and sadly paid for it with their lives. 
Remus had no regrets about his decision. He even said it to Harry himself that he hopes Teddy will one day understand what his father died for. Anyway guys, there you have it. If Remus and Tonks had just remained with their son like they had for months, they would still be alive. But let's just look at the other people who killed them for a moment and how their influence could have been wavered. There was a moment where Ron had an opportunity to kill Antony and Dolohov, with his logic being, if it was the other way around, there's not a chance Dolohov would have spared any of them. Had he gone through with it, Remus would not have come up against Antony in the Battle of Hogwarts and may well have survived, but it's not to say he wouldn't have come up against someone else. What about Bellatrix the Strange? Harry had the chance to finish her with the Cruciatus Curse, or at least have her withheld, to the point where the Aurors would take her, which could have seen her miss the battle too. Then again, I doubt Voldemort would have allowed that anyway. There's so many scenarios that could have seen Lupin and Tonks remain alive guys. The simple explanation is, all they had to do was stay in their hidden location with their son. Easier said than done, I know, because it affects their morals. With that being said guys, that is my take on what needed to happen in order for Remus and Tonks to survive. If you have anything you'd like to add, then please do so in the comment section below. I'm always interested to hear your own opinions on my videos. Thank you again for watching. Thank you so much for your support over the last few weeks. I really, really appreciate it. Thanks again, and I'll see you all in the very next video. Thank you so much for watching, I truly truly appreciate your support. Everyone, notifications of uploads are more important than ever, so please if you haven't already, turn those notifications on to make sure you're notified the moment my video goes live. Making videos is what I love to do, it's my dream and my passion, however it does cost time and money to produce this content, so if you have a dollar to spare to support me on Patreon, in exchange for some exclusive unseen content, then you can click the Patreon link below or at the end of this video. Please only support me if you can afford it. And make sure to follow me on Instagram at InstaDNJ and on Twitter at PotterFolklore. Check out my other videos appearing on screen and please make sure, most importantly, to hit that subscribe button. Thanks again everyone and please have a great day.